A couple of years ago, I picked up the iPhone XR on a contract with Freedom Mobile. Well, the contract is expiring in three months, which means I'm almost two years in. The iPhone XR has been a great phone over that time. It's just as solid and as fast as the day I got it. However, what has the network been like? Did I make a good choice of pairing a great phone and a great network? What's the real world performance and coverage? What about call quality? How about value for money? And the ultimate question, will I be renewing my plan with Freedom as I look to upgrade my phone this fall? Or will I be ditching Freedom and going a different direction? Keep watching to find out. Welcome to Technology Paul. If at any point you're enjoying the video, all you have to do to show your appreciation is to click that like button at the bottom. It really does help the channel. Let's start with the basics. What is Freedom Mobile? Well, it actually started back in 2009 as Wind Mobile. It was a new entrant in the Canadian market and launched in December. It only managed to sign around 5,000 customers during its launch month. At the time, it was only offering service in Toronto and Calgary. The small telecom provider has faced a lot of challenges over the last decade. It was late in deploying LTE and it was bought and sold a few times until it was purchased by Shaw in 2015. And then it changed its name to Freedom Mobile in 2016. Fast forward to 2020, Freedom Mobile has coverage in three provinces. It's available in most of the metropolitan areas within British Columbia, such as Vancouver and Lower Mainland, Victoria and Nanaimo, Kamloops, Kelowna, Vernon, and others. In Alberta, it covers the three largest urban areas within uh, Edmonton, Red Deer, and Calgary, as well as some smaller cities with Medicine Hat and Lethbridge. In Ontario, there's coverage in most of the metro areas of the southern part of the province. Toronto, Mississauga, Hamilton, Kitchener, London, Niagara Falls, and more. It also provides coverage in Ottawa. According to comparecellular.ca, the Freedom Network covers less than 1% of the physical territory in Canada, but provides access for up to 33% of the population, which I think means they've been quite smart about how they have extended their network over time. So why did I choose Freedom Mobile? Well, there are several factors that I considered at the time. First of all, Freedom Mobile at certain time tends to provide steeper discounts on popular phones than other carriers. That certainly caught my attention when I was shopping for the iPhone XR. I did the comparison shopping and found that I could get the phone for something like $200 cheaper than anywhere else at the time. Even right now, as of August 2020, if you compare buying the iPhone 11 on Freedom versus TELUS, you'll see the total cost of the phone over two years is $430 less with Freedom. Those types of deals are hard to pass up. I knew that Freedom only provided coverage in a few urban areas, but I knew I was covered since I live in Edmonton. I thought about it and I figured I only do a major trip outside the city maybe once every two to three months. And when I leave the city, I am roaming on a partner like TELUS, Bell or Rogers. So the way to approach this is to provide my positives and negatives after about two years. Let's jump into the positives. The first one is that Freedom is really quite competitive in terms of value for money. In 2018, I signed on to a plan with five gigabytes of data and unlimited calls and texts across Canada. Part of the signing bonus was an additional 30 gigabytes of data over the life of your contract that could be used at any time. I believe the plan price was $55. I rarely use more than the five gigabyte allotment, but when I did, I was covered by the bonus data. I have never had overage charges for using Freedom inside their network area. That's definitely more than can be said for other carriers who often find ways to charge you more. Okay, well, that's actually the end of the positives. I tried to think of some more, but I couldn't come up with much. As a small side note, I'll add that a lot of folks say they have really good customer service. Apparently they score higher than Rogers or Bell in that area, but I've never really used their customer service, which I suppose is a positive in itself, However, as you'll hear about shortly, I probably should have reached out to them early on in my contract. Let's move on to the negatives. So I actually have to talk about call quality. Early on for at least a couple of weeks, 
I had significant call quality issues. I was having an issue where I could hear everything fine, but the person I was calling heard major amounts of static and crackling. It was happening on almost every call. I was really upset about that, and I should have reached out to their customer service at that time. The only reason I didn't is that I wasn't sure if it was an issue with the network or the phone. I was trying some network resets on my phone and some other little things to try and improve the issue. Nothing really worked, but after a couple of weeks, the issue went away. To me, that means that Freedom was having some network issues and it might have been related to the launch of the new device on their network, or it could have been something completely different. I wish I could say that since that little episode ended, everything was fine after that. However, I still find that one in 10 calls suffer from some kind of issue. Either the other party can't hear me or I can't hear them for at least part of the call. Often the issue fixes itself quickly and the rest of the call is fine, but believe me, it's a frustrating issue. Next up is roaming outside of the home network. I have to admit I underestimated how big of an issue this would be. See, the initial plan I was on provided 500 megabytes of roaming data. I sometimes take weekend trips to the mountains, but certainly didn't think I would use that much data while I was outside of the home network. Well, I did end up running out of data on several occasions when I was traveling. If you think about it, it makes sense. When you're on a road trip, you often are using more data than normal, mapping out routes, searching for interesting things to do, listening to music. Running out of data was such an annoyance over time that I ended up moving to a higher plan that provided one gigabyte of roaming data. So now I'm on a plan that provides better roaming and also more in-network data, even though that's not really necessary for me. Relating to data is download speeds. I find that it definitely varies a lot from time to time and depending on the location within the city. I actually just did two speed tests back to back and got some pretty different results. However, the speeds I'm seeing while standing in my living room are quite good. That said, speedtest.net ranks Freedom Mobile last of the six major carriers in Canada for internet speeds. Looking at this chart shows a stark contrast where Freedom has a speed score of less than half that of TELUS. Beyond those things, there's also a little annoyance when it comes to picking up the Freedom Network on my phone. When transitioning from a no service area or a nationwide area, it seems to take forever to switch to the Freedom Network when I know I'm in a coverage area. For example, when I'm on the light rail transit system and going through a tunnel, of course I lose service. But after exiting the tunnel, it sometimes takes several minutes to pick the signal back up again. The same thing applies when traveling back into the city from the countryside. I'm usually well into the city again before my phone starts displaying freedom as the carrier. Let me talk about my final thoughts here. The question I posed at the beginning is, will I be renewing my contract or getting my next phone with freedom? The short and simple answer is no. I will not continue to be a Freedom customer after my contract is over in three months. To me, the network quality issues have just been too problematic to continue on. Download speeds is one thing, but the call quality issues that I've seen have just been too much. And yes, I have confirmed that it's not just me or my phone. My partner also experiences some of the same frustrations. To be fair, I've also spoken with people who say they've never had those types of issues. So it may have to do with the type of phone you have or the overall network compatibility. But to me, if they offer a certain phone on their network, it should work well all the time. So after a couple of years of usage, I have to give Freedom Mobile a failing grade. Now, I am not saying my opinion should affect your decision entirely. You should take all of this into consideration though. If you rarely make phone calls, then you may not be too concerned with the occasional quality issue. Plus, Freedom Mobile offers folks who are budget conscious the ability to get some of the top tier phones for less than at other carriers. So they definitely get points for that. All right, that brings us to the end of another video. If you enjoyed the video, please show your appreciation by clicking that like button and subscribe for more Technology Paul. We'll see you in the next one.